is the Ain't That Something podcast with your host, Antonio. Queen B is off tonight. She's out sick, so I gave the night off. And the holidays is approaching. So what I want to talk about tonight is comic books and comedy. Something that we haven't spoke about in a while. You know, due to other things, current events, you know, new calls, stuff going on like that. So I want to get back into the comic books and I want to get back into comics and talking about comic books and comics tonight. I want to start off with comics, comic books. You know, a lot of people, uh, Marvel versus DC, that's one of the biggest things going right now. I'm not too much of a Marvel fan. I think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is incredible. I love their movies. I'm not a great big fan of superpowers, you know, as far as the powers and abilities. I think it's a little overdone and redundant. You know, I like more like the vigilantes. I'm more of a DC guy, but I can tell you where DC went wrong. It's oversaturated between Superman and Batman. The damn origin stories. We don't need to know your origin. That's what I'm telling these comic books. How can you not know we don't need to know your origin anymore? Okay, Batman, 1989, we saw your origin, okay? I saw it in 89. Why do we have to see it again in 2005? Okay, I get it. It's a newer generation. They may not know what happened with you, but I know, you know, um, and just it's just oversaturated. You did it in 05. Then you did it again in Superman versus Batman. You know, it's just reliving your mother. Your parents get shot. You, you, you did it again on a TV show, Gotham. You know, we know your parents been shot then killed and, and by the by the Joker or you know or Arthur Flick, whoever it was who killed your parents, mainly supposed to be the Joker. You know, there's different alternate timelines and different universes if you want to dive deep into the comic book um history. Superman, we know you're an alien, we know you came to this planet. It's been done in Superman, uh Man of Steel, it's been done in Superman, the original has been done in the com in the comic books and everything. But I do give it to him that animated series, movies and stuff you can't touch. Can't touch them in animated. Marvel tried but can't come close. But I do say Marvel did come close with the X-Men, the nineties X-Men um TV show on Fox. That was incredible. That was deep. I think a little too deep. Went over a lot of people's heads. Spider-Man was good too. But then Batman came out with that animated series. And kind of changed the tone of everything. You know. And then that's where DC wins again. Because they have great storytelling. When it comes to um, their animated series. And stuff like that. But the character I would like to dwell on. And he is, actually has a TV show. A lot of people... Haven't heard of it, uh, Black Lightning. I mean, they probably heard of it, but they click, you know, turn the channel past it. And he's getting a chance to be in Crisis this year, which I think is really cool. I think Black Lightning has the dopest cast ever. I mean, uh, I'm glad they got rid of that suit. Season 3, there's a new suit. Spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen Season 3, there's a new suit. I like that Tobias Wells is a great arch nemesis he's not just the bad guy for season one or season two he's like all around hopefully he's gonna be through the whole how many seasons they go i hope he's through the whole the whole set because he is a dope bad guy he's very interesting he's not one dimensional he has a lot of character he has style he has charisma he has swag he's a dope dude also he's a rapper the guy who plays him the actor I don't remember his name, so I'm not here to butcher names. <laughs> but Black Lightning, uh, the character is Jefferson Pierce. He's, you know, a superhero trying to save his family and uh, try to live an everyday life and, and freeling and with the school and everything. And I know, I know everybody who always jumps online is like, we're static shot, we're static shot, we're static shot. Let's let Jefferson Pierce live. Let's let him do his thing with his daughters. Let's see what he got to bring to the table because he's the legend. He's the myth, you know. He's the one that supposedly got um, Static Shock, you know, trained him. So let's let him let's let him do what he do, you know. Um, and as far as that goes, 
I haven't seen too much of this season of uh, of Thunder. She became Blackbird, and I think she's gonna go with that alter ego for a little while. I think Thunder was too flashy. Uh, I could see where it gets tired real quick. The only um, DC is doing their thing as far as the small screen. They can't touch the big screen with Marvel, and I'm gonna get to that of why they where they make the mistakes. To me, this is all my opinions. You know, you could say other things. Oh. Uh, I don't see what you're talking about or this, that, and third. But these are just my opinions. Some of you may agree, some of you may not. You know, but I think it's oversaturated. I think Batman's oversaturated. I don't know why you guys are doing another Batman movie. It's oversaturated. It's been there, done that. You know, Superman, uh, been there, done that. Um, Wonder Woman 1984 seems interesting. I mean, I'm, I may check it out. You know, she surprised me with the first one. So it seemed interesting. I may check it out. But uh, uh, why don't y'all go after some of the uh, the B-rate uh, superheroes? You know, make a movie about them. Like Booster Gold. That would be a dope movie. Make the movie about The Flash. You know, you guys really need to try to execute. Even though there is the... Um, the there is the um, animated version... But you guys should concentrate and make the real version, the movie version, Flashpoint. I think Flashpoint would be so dope. The way, you know, do it the right way, though. Give all the essence of Flash. I think your movie should remain dark. You know, I mean, I think there should be a, a newer Flash. I think the CGI with the old Flash, the one they used for the Justice League was horrible. I'm sorry, that running was horrible. I tried to like everything about the Justice League. I liked the Justice League. I tried to like everything about the Justice League movie. It wasn't there. It was like the actors was already over it. Superman went and shaved his mustache, which he should have came back with the mustache and the beard. He's been dead in the crypt for damn near a year. So he should have came back with the mustache and, and the beard and stuff like that, you know? But, um, yeah, do a Flashpoint movie. I think a Flashpoint movie would be dope. And, and do it from the same... Take that same script from the animated and put it into a real movie form. You would have something because not only was Reverse Flash a dope character and the story and, and what Flash wanted to do. I mean, I would go back in time and try to save my mother. Everybody would go back in time and try to save their parent. You know, and it was so dope where... You know, Bat at the Batman's father was Batman, but he was like some he was wild. He was some wild Batman. And at the end he gave uh the Flash a letter. No nobody knew each other. Aquaman was going up against Wonder Woman. It was battling the the Amazons wanted to rule the oceans. The oceans wanted to rule the, the, the land dwellers. Uh Superman was actually like an irradiation tool, but he was all like wrinkled up and he needed uh sunlight and once he got sunlight he was he was doing his thing he was tearing everything up during the war you know and uh, i think that should be done you have the budget for you you can use a lot of the old aquaman sets and stuff like that i mean aquaman is coming out in, the new Aqu aquaman 2 is coming out in 2022 like who gonna remember the first one it was 2018. Now you want me to wait all this time? See, that's the thing with you guys, DC. You wait too long to drop the movie. Stop holding on to these movies. Stop worrying about the Joker too. Let's go on with the next character. You know, that's where you guys dwell too much. That's where Marvel's whooping your ass. See, I think Marvel's going to suffer though because they got rid of Thanos. Thanos was the only interesting thing about the Marvel Cinematic Universe because of the way he was. The complex character, unbeatable. He, he, you know, he brought a lot to that game, and I, I don't see them unless they bring him back. They're gonna bring the kids of Thanos. I know it's supposed to be in uh the Phase Five. So the kids of Thanos. I don't think Spider Man can carry a movie. I think they're gonna be bringing back um Iron Man for a little bit, and then they should go off with uh with, with Rita or Riri, the girl who stole his gear. And she's her own, made her own Iron Man. I think they should go with her. And I think they should go with Miles Morales. Like, bring him in, into the fold. I think it would be show, show more ethnicity, you know, instead of, like, a straight up, I'm sorry, all these white superheroes. I'm sorry. But uh, you need some diversity. And not a bunch of side characters that are black. Uh, you know, take how you want it. That's, I'm just, you know, I'm saying that. 
because uh, it's come on, uh, the Black Panther was dope. Now you have to wait a while for a new Black Panther. So let's put out a Luke Cage. Let's put out a, a DC. Let's put out Black Lightning. Let's put out Black Lightning the movie. Um, Black Lightning the TV show is incredible, and I don't know why that you know. What I think they're trying to do is, um, I think what they're trying to do is just cross over the crisis is coming in, in December 8th. So I think they're going to try to do, they're trying to cross him over to get more fans. Because I think, like, it's barely holding on, but the choreo, the chore, uh, choreography, the fight scenes are tight. The, um, the acting is great. The suspense is always a level of danger. Somebody, somebody can get killed at any moment. That's great. Like Supergirl, I never feel in any danger. Supergirl, um, I think she's gonna take a, a bit of a loss because with the new Superman Lois show, I think if her show doesn't do well, she may become a side character in that show. You need to check. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'd rather take that than cancellation. Let me be a side character, get these checks up until I can find something else. You know? And um, uh, Arrow's ending, so there's that void. I mean, Black Lightning can fill the void of Arrow because it's the same dark, gritty type of superhero. There's no, it's never no sunshine for long. It's, it's, it's dark and gritty, so it, it, it could fare well. Now, I would love Arrow to do a crossover with Black Lightning. I think that'd be dope because they both still um, balance of the real world. Like, you know, Flash could go off and be silly, then it gets serious, then it gets silly, where Black Lightning never gets silly. Arrow really never gets silly, silly unless the Flash enters Arrow, then it becomes a little silly with the little, with the little quims here and there. Um, but I'm thinking that I think that's the only way. I mean, Barry could travel to the Flash. I know, I know after this crisis, they're all going to be on the same Earth. So I don't know how that's going to work. It's going to be strange, you know, because the way they split up all the Earths with now with the um monitor, the airtime monitor, he's going to like destroy the their half universe. Batwoman, I say, give her a chance. Give her a chance. Let her get to season two. And then we'll decide whether or not she stays or goes. Because I think she has the potential to be a good show. But she needs to get on her, her feet. To get on her bearings. Same way on this show. You know, I have rough episodes. But I need to get my into my bearing. And once I start getting to my bearing, you know, we gonna flow. We gonna do what we gonna do. Hopefully these numbers rise, you know. But hey, if it don't, I like my core audience. You know, and we can chill. Just have a good time and a good conversation. But um, I'm giving that to Batwoman. I'm giving her uh, uh, till season two. And uh, same thing, because, like, everybody counting out the Titans. The Titans on um, DC Universe, the Titans. Everybody's like, oh, they season, they season one was garbage. It was trash. Not really. A lot of people didn't watch it. Their season was good. You know, I even like the F Batman. You know, I like that, because it shows realism. You know, it shows grittiness. It's... It's a, a long way from Marvel. I, now, I don't know what Disney is going to do with this streaming service that just launched. And by the way, congratulations, Disney. You got 10 million subscribers in two days. That's amazing. I wish I could get 10 million subscribers in two days. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, congrats. I don't know what they're going to do with their new shows. I heard they're rebooting a lot of the um, the Marvel shows, like, Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, leave Iron Fist wherever y'all found him. Take him back to that dumpster and dump him. That show was god awful. I'm sorry, it had a good premise. I never read the comic book. It had a good premise. I didn't like the comic book. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't like his outfit. That green leotard with that yellow bandana, with that yellow wave cap with the eyes. I was like wave cap people, it was wave cap. Do rag, okay? Do rag for some of my hoods, hood people. Do rag with the eyes poked out, and it was a bright, like a green. That's how he looked in the comic book with yellow boots. Uh, nah, no. Luke Cage looked funny in the beginning of the comic books too. Black Lightning costume looked whack in the '80s. I think everybody costume looked whack in the '80s. You know, even Incredible Hulk, he was Mister Fix It, Joe Fix It. He was Joe Fix It for most of the '80s and early '90s. Like you know, and then he went back to being. 
the Green Hope, from the Grey Hope to the Green Hope. You got to check it out. You got to really, you know, I mean, it's a making it easier to follow the movies. Ain't making it real easy, like, with the movies to follow up. The, they don't go exactly along with the comics. There's some comic book history in there, but they don't try to saturate you too down as, as the comics is concerned. You know, and on another note, I I think Thanos was the best thing about the Avengers. Because um, if you think about it, was um, Age Ultron. Ultron, was he... I didn't feel no danger with him. He was a robot. I mean, he wasn't even scary. He had the twins. You know, he had Magneto's kids. But come on now. My, my man got killed by bullets, got killed by a gun. No way. No way is that supposed to happen. You're supposed to be faster than bullets. You got shot up. No way. I'm not buying that. I'd rather... The Flash is even faster than him. You know what I'm saying? Quicksilver. The Flash is faster than him. You know, so... um. Nah, I think he's supposed to be fast as the speed of sound. And Flash is fa fast as the speed of lightning. Like, light or lightning. Like, he's that fast. So, um, that's that comparison. But their Flash TV show versus Flash the movie. Flash the TV show Flash is a much better Flash. You know? Grant is a much better Flash than Miller. Azra Miller. He's a much better Flash. Um, he's cool. the other Flash is quirky, but it's just the movie was too corny. Even Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, uh, the witch shouldn't have been the bad guy. Flag could have been in there, you know, Sar uh, Sergeant Flag. He could have been in there. It should have, it should have mainly been Deadshot. It should have been four characters: Deadshot, Harley Quinn, Captain Boomerang, and. I want to say the samurai girl it could have been her and then you would have had their backstories but they should have been going after somebody in another country like a terrorist or something like that that's why i think suicide squad messed up they relied too much on will smith and the girl mag maggie i think her name is i don't want to put her name um Hall the one who played harley quinn they relied too much on them to carry the movie and it was the movie was all over the place. It, who, I don't know who wrote that, what studio approved that. It shouldn't have been. I mean, the soundtrack was dope. Black Lightning got great music, by the way. The soundtrack was pretty dope, but the, the essence of the movie, it just it just went wrong. It's wrong. Birds of Prey is going to be horrible. I'm sorry. I'm not wasting my time or my money to go see it. I'm not even going to waste that on the fire stick. Um, not wasting that. To watch that no that's no uh, what other movie they coming out with i i want to see the next ant-man because ant-man is cool but it's never no danger with ant-man but it's always a good ride it's always a good movie it's a good time man I, I, I like a good time that's what i like a good time but it's never no danger now infinity war was danger for me in game not so much danger. It was a little sad when Iron Man, you know, kicked the bucket. But it was a waste of three hours to me. Godzilla was a little bit better than Endgame. People gonna come, people gonna come at me. Oh, you, you pull shit. Oh, oh, no, hell no, hell no. Yo, no, nah, Endgame was, was crazy, crazy, crazy. What the Hulk do? What the Hulk do? Nothing. Same thing he did in the last movie, nothing. Hulk was at his roarest and Age Ultron. Hulk was doing his damn thing. And then y'all shot him off and died in space and got rid of him. So, you know, and, and, and Thor Ragnarok, Hulk was doing his thing. Hulk was busting behind. But you took away the element of Thor and Thanos, a great fight. Like, have them meet out in the middle of the field and go at it. That's what Endgame could have offered, you know, the final. But I know they're saving that Hulk versus, they want the Hulk versus Wolverine. So maybe they're saving that for that. Uh, see all that action, maybe. I mean, it was uh, it was a dope cartoon, partially. It um, really wasn't that great. It wasn't. I, I'd rather see the, the Hulk versus thing from, Fat from Fantastic Four. They fought like three times in, in the comic books and they were their fights was amazing. So 
I'd I rather that, you know, rather than um, Hulk versus Wolverine. I mean, come on now. Hulk is supposed to be seven feet tall, seven to eight feet tall. Wolverine is five, five, five or something. Five. Wolverine is short, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Hugh Jackman's going to play him, so he's going to give him some, some height. But he's theoretically, he's short. It's, I'm not. Uh, I would like to see if Wolverine was going to fight somebody. Wolverine versus Blade. That would be dope. Or Wolverine versus any of the Inhumans. That, that's another one. X-Men versus Inhumans. It's, that's how they should do the movie. Like X-Men versus, you know, the Inhumans. That's what I say, you know. That's how I feel about that. But, um... Yeah, let I me mean, let's see what Marvel do in this next installment. DC, they're already on fast track to make Joker two. They and and they were all worried about Robert Pattinson in this new Batman movie. Ah, uh, I just see where this has the potential to go bad, people. I think y'all should give Batman a rest for a while. Batman, you know what y'all should do if y'all want to do a Batman movie, honestly. Do Batman Beyond or do Flashpoint and give us that perspective of Batman, Batman's father. Or give us Terry McGinnis, Batman Beyond. Do not give us the same old boring Bruce Wayne story. I'm sick of it. Um, I think what they're going to go for is um, the nightmare story. Um, like what takes place on Halloween when Batman, all Batman's villains are going against him for revenge. And I think... Robert Pattinson is voting for the blue and gray uniform Batman uniform, which was never been done except for in the 60s when um, the old Batman, the very original Batman had it, Adam West. So uh, I don't know how that's going to play out. It might look dope. It, you know, it, it, it's something different. I think they're trying to get away from that dark grittiness, but Batman is dark and gritty. They don't, you know, Hollywood tries to put their own spin on it and that's sometimes that's where it can go wrong so i don't know but i want to switch gears now i gotta actually talk about two things now i'm from new york so you know how we give it up in hip-hop my new york people did you hear did you hear now first of all uh first of all little kim did not give the crown to Cardi B. That's, I'm just, I'm letting y'all know now that ain't how it happened. She did not give her the crown. The crown was vacant. Cardi B picked up and put it on her head and she, she became the queen. Nikki popped back up and released a couple things that was lukewarm, lukewarm at its best. But recently, Nikki has popped up on the baby song and her verse. When I tell you her verse is hard, her verse is coming, her verse is, her verse is rough, her verse is ready. Then let me paint the picture for you. She came out with that verse. Then later that evening, on Instagram, on Instagram story, Cardi B releases a freestyle to DMX B. It was DMX, Jay-Z. It was a freestyle beat, and she releases a freestyle on there. I don't know if she wrote it or somebody wrote it for her, but it was hard, New York. It was so hard. It was like, ooh, ooh, I want to I play it back to back. Ooh, you know, it was, that, it was that magnetic. I was like, oh, my God. It took me back. It took me back. Now, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of light-skinned beef in here. This, this one light-skinned chick versus this light-skinned chick. Remy, where are you? You gotta represent for the dark skinned girls. You gotta, you gotta hit us with some heat, and hit us with something hard. Fab is coming back with Summertime Shootout Three. He's dropping that on Black Friday, so be prepared. Pick that up, download it, whatever you gotta do. Summertime Three Shootout. Oh my God, it's gonna be crazy. It's it's Fab at its best. I heard that Choosy record. That Choosy record is hard. I can't forget my Long Island native, my boy G Strong, dropped a single. Look for it. G Strong is now on all streaming services and 
His uh, single is in 63 stores across the country. He's doing it. He's been at it for a long time. You know, Long Island boy, he getting it, he getting it. He Hulk smashing all over the place. And I like it, yo. It's like it's like classic hip-hop. It's really gritty. It's, it's dope. He got that urban edge. G Strong, you, yo, let's take the streets this summer, baby. Let's take the streets now. And they're open. Let's get it. You know, um... But yeah, about that that hip hop man, it's got me in that feeling again, you know. Got me, ooh, ooh, let me hear some more, ooh, <laughs> you know. And um, another thing, want to just switch over. I know I'm switching a lot of gears. I ain't got that much time, folks. You about to wrap it up, but um, I want to talk about Little Rel. Little Rel released a special over the weekend on HBO. Now it's an honor to have an HBO comedy hour on hbo it's a real honor i remember they used to give people 15 minutes dave Chappelle worked from 15 minutes up to a half hour to get in an hour you know killing me softly so he worked his butt off to get that hour so it's it's something that's just not given to you you have to work your ass off for it and i believe little rel's relevant was his golden ticket he busts his ass that was a great special and then with the movie Get Out, and then with Bird Box, I mean, the man's hype was coming up, coming up, coming up. So now it brings you to this last special he just did. And I want to say, yeah. I mean, as a comedian myself, I have had bad performances. But to me, this was like a lot of um, inside jokes that you tell around the family when the family gets together like within this couple of weeks uh was coming up week of thanksgiving you get you get around you tell old stories by each other because they was in on that story so every it's funny to everybody when you tell a joke that's like an inside joke and a lot of people can't relate to it and they can't get into it it becomes it falls flat and a lot of his material fell flat and then he started laughing at his own jokes. And I don't know who was behind. I know Carmichael was the director. That's his boy, Gerard Carmichael. Um, I don't know what was the discussion on and having it in that location. They had it like in a gym. And it's Crenshaw, first of all, bro, you from Chicago. If I'm going to do a special, I'm going home to do my special. Those are my people. Those, those are the people who know me. They will give me the biggest laughs because they're supporting me. That's your core audience. You go home to do a special. You don't go to Crenshaw to do a special where you've never been to Crenshaw before. You know, that's number one. Then you do it in the gymnasium in the daytime. Now, everybody in there looking at the show, to me, looks like those infomercial people where they're paid to laugh. And nothing on Little Rail. I love Little Rail. You know, I, I swore up and down. I wish his, so, his TV show would have got a second season because I think it was just getting his, his, his getting, finding his groove, you know? Like, you know, The Neighborhood, that was Cedric Entertainer, uh, that show is an awesome show. But that show came out swinging. The first episode, I was crying. The first episode of uh, Rail Show, it was like kind of lukewarm, but it got better because it had Sinbad and everybody in it. And it had a nice new fresh cast, just hilarious. It was, you know, getting that show together. But unlike his special that just passed this weekend, uh, it was a dud for me. After maybe 15, 20 minutes of hardcore watching it, I went back to playing in my phone. You know, now I just think he needs to resharpen his tools and come out with some material like he did for the first one. Sometimes you have to go home to get that material you need. I mean, I did it too. I, I flopped. I'm still trying to find my ways. I'm not a full-fledged, you know, uh, sellout crowd type of guy. I'm, I'm still looking around trying to find my groove. I'm an upcoming comedian. I'm trying to get my stuff out and, and trying to go about it hard. And hopefully this podcast will help me build an audience, you know. I hope you guys will start you know, inquisiting, uh, emailing me, checking for me on YouTube, and, and hopefully, you know, I can get this show up and going and start getting my live shows up and going. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think Little Rail just needs to work a, a little more, you know, a little more. But check out Dean Cole on Netflix and check out A.D. Murphy on Netflix on Dolomite. Those are two great, um, one's a movie and one's a special. But they both have the same energy of betting on yourself. 
That's my time. It's been great talking to you guys. This Ain't That Something Cat podcast. <laughs>